as you can see, we've got another video going here. You can see a boat in the uh, background. And I've got the Laura Bay back in the shop. I had said I was going to uh, redo the interior of the hull uh, over from kind of a quasi rowing boat sailing into a pure sailing boat. I have enough um, uh, boats to go rowing around in now that I uh, I wanted a small pure sailing boat. My uh, the eight foot nut hatch makes a great little boat, but this is a great little uh, sailboat, and so I'm going to uh, get rid of change over the seating. I, if you ever seen any of the stories on the Laura Bay, I had that big board that went from side to side that would go fore and aft on here to. Uh, so that you could move the uh, we out here. You could move the seat fore and aft. You know, if, if you're sitting uh, by yourself, you could sit back in here and use the aft or lock, and or if you move forward. Uh, if you got another person sitting in the transom, then you can move the seat up into here and then use the forward set of or locks. So uh, I'm going to uh, I don't know prognosticate as I, I work along on this thing. I've got the, the nose panel off, the lid on the bow seat, and I'm trying to decide if I'm going to keep that up there. I may change the shape of it and put a hatch in uh, in order to make it a water pack apartment. Uh, what I <laughs> had before it was an empty, uh, I think this was a Costco gallon and a half uh, Clorox bottle container. Up in there, I have no idea what's in the, uh, the transom here. So, I've uh, got one panel off, and uh, I'm probably going to remove some other stuff too. But let me uh, reset up and uh, show you what I'm doing on the back seat here. Got my little Milwaukee knife here. Bang! Forward seat. It's not very. Go ahead and rattle these out. This seat, uh, I'm still going to have probably a place to sit in the back, but it's going to be a narrow seat, like if you've ever downloaded the plans or the uh, study model for the uh, the Pudgy. Uh, it just has a little narrow seat in the back here. And uh, let me go. I'll go ahead and do the rest of the camera. I'm just going to be pulling these screws. I'll come back and show you what surprise I have inside. <laughs> what did he use for flotation? I can't remember. Well, I got all the screws out. I'm surprised. Quite a, I used quite a few of them to hold this thing down. So, what do we got in here? Ah! Costco animal cracker containers. Now I got some nice jugs. I can turn these into some really killer uh, bird feeders. Open some holes on the sides and then. Uh, Put a wire through the top. Great. The birds will love it. Well, now I have to uh, use my uh, multi-tool and I may have to get some more aggressive, some new blades uh, to cut through. I've already cut through on one side and it's noisy and it's dusty, so I won't, uh, well. So I get to do that for a while and I'm going to have to give me some new blades. This is taking too long. Well, you can see that I've got the uh, back bulkhead cut out, and then on up in here, there was uh, you can see the continuation of this uh, wooden uh, support that had gone over and around. I was going to, I started um, using the uh, multi tool to saw it, and I thought, no, that's not worth it. Uh, so I took my uh, chisel out and I just chiseled them off and I had a couple screws in here and I just backed them out. So I got some uh, holes to fix on the outside, but I've got my uh, center down so I can build a little box seat and put a hatch on it. And so then everything else will give me some more room um, on the, uh, I got the other side done. Got that uh, bracket taken off and I think I'm going to leave that bulkhead in place. I'm going to fill the hole in at the bottom. I had a little limber hole in there to drain it. I'm going to seal that off and then there's a uh, piece of wood across the top here. Oops. 
got my remote caught on the camera. There's a piece of wood across the top here I'm going to uh, take off and then uh, round it over with the glass tape. I was debating whether to take this and then angle it in, uh, but I'll just go ahead and leave it. Fill in the limber hole, put the, uh, the lid back on and then, and then uh, glass is probably just fill it around the sides. That should be enough to hold it in place, a good heavy fillet. So, back to it, I guess. Got this ground down. I uh, went and got today a uh, carbide tipped delta sander. And it uh, worked pretty good getting uh, some of the ex excess material down. I've got some spots over here where I uh, got into the surface ply, so I'm going to uh, mix up some epoxy and epoxy, cover it with some plastic, put a, a uh, plate over it, and then I got my big uh, deep clamp that I'll uh, suck that back in. I got a spot here, here, and, and over here when I was uh, chiseling off the wood, the surface of the uh, plywood came up a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that. I can fix that up. I added, uh, I had some extra time yesterday, so I uh, went ahead and like I've said before, I was like, just get the epoxy out and do it. So I epoxy it up in behind these little areas here where the, uh, I lifted up the layer of uh, plywood and um, got that back down flush again. So there's a little bit of void in here, but I'll fill that up with um, fairing compound. Same with my big. Uh, oh, come on. One of those things with these screws, you got to figure out what you use on first. Okay, got that. One. down and I got some uh, mix up some fairing compound I got some more epoxying to do um, also up on the uh, the bow here I pulled off a uh, piece of wood that had been setting on the outside like this oops I said that's where I had a little notch in the side that the, uh, the seat sat in and that was an early principle. This, uh, the Lower Bay was the second boat I, I ever made. So uh, my ideas of uh, boat construction have changed since then. So I was able to take a chisel and just uh, go in here and pry it off, sand this back down again. So instead of throwing this away, I'll just go ahead and uh, I've already trimmed it down. Then I'll just epoxy it back on on the other side. And then when I uh, put the other plate back on, it'll give me an area here where I can epoxy. And then I'll round it over and put a layer of glass tape on. I'll put the uh, uh, glass tape on before I, I put the fillets around the edge. So then the fillets will hold up the, the rough ends of the glass, which is something new I also do. And I was trying to decide down in here where I've got, the, uh, got this frame across the boat, whether or not I, even, I don't know if you can see the lines, I've got some pencil lines in here to decide whether do I want to open this up uh, so I get me a water through or just let it be. Uh, I'm getting to think I might just let it be, it's just less have to grind. It's not like there's any reason I have to stick a foot or anything through here. And if I get splashed up in the bow area then the water gets trapped in there instead of coming back and getting me soaked so probably going to leave that uh, the way it is i will have to uh, fix up these areas here where the, um, the little sidebars are set so and lots of sanding i also had something down in here when i first built the boat I thought the attachment point for the, the sail uh, 
would be down in here, so I put this in and I found it, it just got in the way with the seat and everything. I was having to crawl around it and it was always in the way to sit or, or my leg or whatever, so I moved um, the attachment point for the sail up into here right behind the dagger board. And I found this, uh, this piece of bungee cord that just you know goes through holes on either side with a knot on it. Uh, it's a great way to, if you you, know, you want to pull up the dagger board for a downwind run, you can just uh, pull up the board and this thing uh, uh, holds it in place. Or if you don't want to use it, it just you know, flops out of the way. But the one thing I do like with these uh, larger uh, openings, and then I have always used the knack of foils, is uh, the foil can twist in the trunk. And you can tell it when you go from one tack to the next, you can see the dagger board just automatically uh, changes directions, uh, angles inside the uh, dagger board trunk, and it always points you higher. If I'm going on a starboard, you know, if I'm going off this direction, uh, the little board is pointing off that way too, uh, and um, gives me a higher pointing angle. And you can almost, if you look down the center of the boat, and manually push the uh, the board the other direction. You can see how the bow falls off, and you let it go back, and the bow comes back up again. So uh, I like that with those NACA foils. So let me get to work. I got some sanding to do. I have some sanding to do, and make some panels. Well, I got some uh, gel magic out, and uh, in my Utah tube, and uh, I've always told you before that. System 3 used to have what they call the, the vampire fang tip, but then the company, uh, TA Corporation, that makes the tubes, these two-part tubes for them, they stopped making these things. But I got to thinking that you can take, without, the, uh, without that little plug, you can still um, squeeze out of the tube into a little cup and mix it that way. You just got to be, you know, make sure you wipe off the, the nozzle well so you don't uh, plug it up with cured epoxy. Uh, so now I've got my uh, grinders. I went and bought, uh, I had to get a new uh, set of blades uh, for the multi-tool. And I told you I'd, um, instead of sawing them off, I used my chisel to chisel off the wood perimeter uh, boards like you can see, or the well, like they were up on the nose there. And I got a carbide. And this little rascal really, uh, it does a number on the paint, but I, I'm going to use my 60 grit, so I got my mask, and you can hear my uh, Jet 1000B up there getting ready to suck out all the dust. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to grind away all those spots over there that I uh, just filled in with the epoxy, and get them flat, and then I can come back and um, fill them with the uh, fairing compound. So, you can see the color change around in here where I mixed up some quick fare and uh, some System 3 quick fare and filled in these spots where I had, uh, remember we earlier I had taken, I had scraped uh, regular epoxy into the crack and then put the, the plastic and the clamp over the, in the backing block and the clamped it in place to hold it flat. So now I've uh, gone ahead and then I went and sanded it now I filled it in with uh, quick fare and a fairing compound, so I'll go ahead and let that set overnight. And that's another one of those things that, and like working with epoxy, the quick fair, fairing compound, if easy fill it, whatever, the, uh, the fillet material, uh, you know, you think it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to have reserve a special day for that. But it's, it's pretty simple to work with. Just get your gloves on, mix it up, and go ahead. I mean, it's just, hardly takes any time at all. It's, it's getting through that mental block to, to just, to do it. Uh, just do it, you know. Mix it up, do it. I would have, uh, I would have, you know, uh, been pessimistic about it. I would have. I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do some other stuff tomorrow. Well, I've finished it all now. I can go in and have my coffee and call it a day. And this will set up overnight, and that'll give me, a, you know, a, something to sand tomorrow. So I probably have enough on this video. We're going to call this one the end of this. We've gutted it out. We've, you know, sanded it down. Um, filled in the holes, uh, 
epoxied the uh, stiffener on the bow. Uh, now I got it, and I, I just I had some leftover uh, uh, fairing compound, so I I put a piece of tape on the back side of that limber hole on that uh, bow bulkhead seat bulkhead, and uh, filled it in. So. Uh, if I do any more fairing, I'll probably go ahead and maybe fill the, the other side on just to uh, uh, even it out because it's filleted on, filleted on both sides. Now I need to get a hold of Chuck down at Duckworks and get a couple six inch hatches, one for the, the bow and then once for this box transom seat. That'll probably be the next thing we do. I do want to take some more time and uh, with that little uh, carbide uh, triangle thing on my uh, Milwaukee multi-tool and go around and edge some of the, um, the, the edges of the tapes, uh, the glass tape on the inside where uh, I wasn't really up on uh, uh, getting rid of the, the, uh, um, oh, the, the selvage. Gee, I could think of that word if I <laughs> think about it. The selvage was standing kind of proud and it was kind of rough on your body when you're moving across, especially if you're in shorts in the summertime. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind that down really well and get it uh, filled. I don't think I'll fair the edges, but I'll grind them down to where uh, there's not a problem anymore. So uh, I will really heavily sand this thing before I put another coat of primer on the inside. And, and I'm gonna get rid of this white and go to the normal uh, light gray that I usually have on my interiors. So it doesn't blind you in the, uh, in the sunshine. And then we'll flip the hole and I, I need to do some work on the bottom too, so. But we got a lot of stuff to do before we get to flipping the hole. So, see you later.